something a little bit different, a little different format. I want to talk more in detail about the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. And this is because I talk about this diet a lot with clients and with other people like on Instagram. And I find that when I introduce the idea of the diet or send them to the NT for IBD website that explains the diet, people still have a lot of questions about it. And honestly, this is the most researched and science-backed diet that will put people into remission. Now, some background on the diet. Exclusive enteral nutrition, which is purely either tube feeding or taking in an oral nutrition supplement that is all liquid, um, has been the main dietary treatment option for IBD and mostly in the pediatric population, although it does work for adults. However, once food is reintroduced, the inflammation and the gut dysbiosis come right back. The Crohn's disease exclusion diet allows patients to eat real food while their inflammation reduces and the inflammation will continue to go down even after six weeks and the dysbiosis will remain corrected, whereas a side-by-side -side comparison of six weeks on exclusive animal nutrition after they introduce food, the inflammation goes back up, but staying on the Crohn's disease exclusion diet, the inflammation after six weeks remains down and continues to go down. Multiple studies have been done, not only in children, but also in adults. Even adults who have failed biologic therapy, which means that, say, they've been on Humira, Infliximab, Intivio, Stellara, they've been on these different medications and have not seen enough improvement or not achieve remission, they have seen remission with the Crohn's disease occlusion diet. At week six, in one study by Yanaya et al., 68% of the patients reached remission on the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. Now, you may be thinking 68% is not quite enough, but let's compare that to a Humira study. Um, in the Humira trial in 2007, at week 56, only 36% of patients were in remission. So out of 100, about 40% did not reach remission in the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. And then you're looking at Humira and it's 70% of the patients did not reach remission on Humira. And, and look at the difference in time. It took six weeks on the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. At 56 weeks on Humira, it was still only 36% of the patients in remission. Some basics of the Crohn's disease exclusion diet, which from here on I will call the CDED. It consists of whole real foods combined with partial partial enteral nutrition. Now that is the oral enteral nutrition that I was talking about before that people use exclusive enteral nutrition on. So um, with this, remission has been seen without using this partial enteral nutrition, but it is highly recommended to help correct your malnutrition and to add in protein that's needed for mucosal healing. Now this pen can include Ensure, Modulin, Kate Farms, Organ, or Boost. And I can tell you there was a study that looked at 65%, 65 different formulations, and there was no difference in remission chances based on the different formula you're using. So I know a lot of people look at Ensure and they're like, it's full of emulsifiers, it's full of sugar, it's unnatural. How could it possibly help you reach remission? It scientifically has put millions of people in remission. Maybe not millions, but at least hundreds of thousands, um, especially children. The CDED has multiple different phases. Now, all of these, these real whole foods are phased into three different phases. Phase one is six weeks long, and it includes mandatory foods of chicken, and I think it's about five ounces of chicken a day, two eggs, two bananas, one apple, two potatoes, and 50% of your calories are coming from that partial enteral nutrition. The allowed foods are as listed here. So you have, you know, fish, which is basically just white fish. They do have you avoid the oily fish, so no salmon the first six weeks. White rice, rice flour, and rice noodles really help you feel like you're living a normal life. You can make rice flour pancakes, the rice noodles you use in place of pasta, um, avocado, strawberries, melon. Some of these have particular serving sizes attached to them. So for strawberries, for example, you can't eat strawberries multiple times a day. It limits it to five strawberries. And this has to do with the science behind the fiber and all of the additive, added nutrients and things and whether or not it's good for the gut, bad for the gut, depending on inflammatory states. 
it's all very complicated, um, but it's all laid out right here as to what you can and cannot have. The disallowed foods for phase one, laundry list of things, it essentially sums it up to anything that's not on the allowed foods list. So no dairy. Um, and I know a big question I get is, but the partial enteral nutrition usually has a dairy protein. Dairy, I believe the main purpose of exclusion on the on the CDED of dairy is the fact that most dairy products come with additives like emulsifiers, um, added sweeteners, which sugar is allowed, but only a few tablespoons a day. So you don't want to eat, you know, a sugar sweetened yogurt and use up all of your sugar for the day. Um, no soft drinks, no artificial sweeteners, no gums because sugar alcohols and artificial sweeteners are hard on the gut. Um, no alcohol. It does say no coffee. Again, this was probably designed mostly for the pediatric population. I recommend to my clients that they can have coffee, um, black coffee. Um, it does say no non-dairy milks in the beginning. And again, this is only six weeks. After the six weeks, it gets lighter. And even though the diet appears to be very clear cut, it's not one size fits all. And when you're changing diet, there is a lot that goes into it. Your diet is a big part of your life. And if there's something that you know you cannot live without, it may fit in the diet. Just make sure that you are working with a registered dietitian who is specialized in IBD, in Crohn's, in this diet, so that they can help guide you in healthy ways to add in those things that you're missing. Phase two is also six weeks long. So after you finish six weeks of phase one, you move on to phase two. Your mandatory foods stay the same, and now your partial nutrition, you can drop down to 25% of your calories instead of 50%. There are a few additional added allowed foods, including tuna, bread. Now, the bread is meant to be homemade, and it's meant to be made with baking soda and not yeast, um, but alternatives, you could make biscuits also. Um, I add in pasta in phase two, whereas the guidelines actually add it into phase three. But a little bit of pasta in place of that bread in case you don't like baking soda bread. Uh, lentils, quinoa, oats, sweet potatoes, more fruit variety, more vegetable variety, and then baking soda and baking powder are allowed in this phase. Phase three is the maintenance phase. So after you've done 12 weeks, you move on to phase three, and this is meant to be the lifetime phase. Those mandatory foods are only mandatory five days a week. And then you continue your partial nutrition, 25% KCAL. Again, this is all customizable. If you feel like you're not going to live on pen for the rest of your life, customizable. We can work through that. There are additional allowed foods. Pasta, yogurt. Now, this is going to be a limited processed yogurt. You're going to think like, you know, the, the yogurts that don't have anything added to them. No sweeteners, uh, no flavoring agents, things like that. Coffee is added in on this phase. And all of the fruits and vegetables are now available to you. <clears throat> Uh, in addition, there are free days. Now, these free days are not binge days. They are not cheat days. They are days where you can relax a little bit. You can enjoy breakfast with the family as is. You can go out to eat at a restaurant uh, for lunch or dinner, one of those days, or even breakfast, have a brunch. Um, all of, most of the restrictions are taken away for these free weekends. However, restrictions that are recommended include no frozen doughs, no processed meats, bacon, hot dogs, sausages, and no soft drinks. Does this mean you can't have bacon ever again? Not necessarily. If you want to have bacon on Christmas morning, I think it's okay once, once a year to have it. Um, and no soft drinks. So, I mean, uh, replacing soft drinks is fairly easy these days with the advent of seltzer waters. You may have, on these free days, bread, dairy, wine, or beer, cocoa powder, red meat, regular pancakes, and many more. And one meal at a restaurant each day is allowed. The best thing about the Crohn's disease exclusion diet is that it is the most liberal exclusion diet for Crohn's. The specific carbohydrate diet is very strict, very hard to follow, um, whereas this one is a little bit more digestible, no pun intended. Um, and, you know, especially once you hit the maintenance phase. And again, like I said, everything is flexible to an extent. So the aspects of this diet are planned based on science. There have been many, many, many different studies done on the different types of fiber and what impact they have. There's some fibers that are good when you're inflamed. There's some fibers that are bad when you're inflamed, but good when you're not inflamed. And this, this 
diet is designed based on that information. So that's why I say working with a dietitian is best because, you know, replacing your strawberries with grapes may not be the best option based on the different types of fiber. And your dietitian is going to be able to vet that out for you. And again, there are different ways that this diet can be liberalized. A CDED certified expert, such as myself, went through the CDED program by Modulife. So that means that we've watched all of the background data, all of the success stories, all of the not success stories, all of the different science that's out there, um, and just know the diet in and out, just like the back of our palms. Um, so again, you're looking for a CDED certified expert, such as myself. Uh, the CDED certified experts that have gone through the Modulife program have access to an app, um, and we give this app out to our clients so that they can have access to all of the different created recipes. The recipes are broken down by phase. There's an option to set up your own meal planning within the app, and you can track what you've eaten, and this tracking includes foods that are not on the diet as well, so you can track everything that you've eaten. Um, and then we can work together to see your adherence to the diet, where you're not adhering, um, ways that we can manipulate the diet so that it works best for you. And there is a direct messaging option, so you can direct message your dietitian or other provider that's using the app if you have somebody else. So there is an option to work with me. I do have it out there as part of my business plan is that I have a program for people who want to do the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. Um, and if you wish to work with me, there is a form to fill out on my website, and I will link that below. And once you fill out the form, you and I would have a short one-on-one -on -one discussion. I can answer any questions for you, and we can see if I can be helpful to you on this journey. And anytime working with me on the Crohn's disease exclusion diet, if you feel that it's not the right diet for you, we can move and flex from there. Again, this is your life, your diet, your disease, and it's all individual, and that's why it's very important to work with a professional. These are references I use to put together this form. Comment below any questions you have. Go check out my Instagram page, Nicole Wake RD. I'll have that linked as well. And I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to speaking with you next time. And be sure to like this video if you found it helpful. Have an amazing day.